We here. We here. <laughs> We're definitely here, man. Man, welcome right here to Soulful Discussions, man. That was like the hot mix, DJ Flash's introduction, like hot mix. Like, you like that, Malaysia? I loved it. It sounds like. <laughs> it always gives me pumped. Yeah. Like, it always gives me my, my um, what's the word I'm looking for? Harry Tubman movie. I'm ready to fight the people. <laughs> See? I'm ready to fight the Harry Tubman movie. Yes. <laughs> See <that>? <laughs> <laughs> Way back in the waters. Okay, okay, sis. <laughs> <laughs> man, like, welcome, 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 everybody. Right here, man. WQJT Flight Radio. This is Soulful Discussions. And we have one of our favorites on right now, Tina Renee. What's going on, girl? What's up, y'all? Welcome to Soulful Discussions Flight Radio 105.7, y'all. It has been three years in a row. Malaysia, oh my God. Y'all, we've been celebrating for a whole week. We've been celebrating since last week. As most don't know, April the 3rd is our three-year anniversary. So shout out to all the listeners, everybody that's been supporting us throughout the years. We appreciate you for all that you have done. So um, keep on loving on us because we're going to keep on loving on you. All right, y'all, as always, it's always something. We got this little wonderful technical difficulty, but that's not going to stop us from, from where we got to go. So just to let you guys know, on uh, today, we do have TJ Jackson from Freeport, Illinois, that will be joining us on our show at 8 p.m. And we also have the boss from the Real Life Matters and Talk It Out that will be joining us as well. Um, so if you don't know, not only are we on Facebook, we're also on Live 365. Y'all can find us by searching Flight Radio Studio Productions. And then on top of that, what you guys can do is hit us up on your radio dials if you within the Freeport area and say, what's up? All right, Malaysia, we got you, girl. We got y'all back. Hey, we what's got you. up, Facebook? What's up, you guys? Well, now cool. we can really celebrate this three years. Yes. Yes. Yes, have you like have you like looked back in your files like some of the old like my old videos yeah. and things like that? Yeah, I went back and I looked back when it was you know when it was me, you, Tony, and Miss Feisty on the yes. show. Yes. We was learning the whole situation, um, and then I brought it all the way up until now, just to see like everybody within the eight one five that has been on our show. Not just the eight one five, but I'm really excited about that. But folks from all around the world, Randy, oh my God, my dang gone friend, Randy Gill, that was on the show. So looking mm, back yes. at that, looking back at everybody we have come in contact with, Angela Davis, um, and the list goes on. You know, um, I, I, I'm just so excited. I just can't even talk about it. Like, we just had so many people here. I mean, and we could not have done it, to be honest, when it all boils down. We could not have done it without Rocky giving us the platform to be able to do so. So shout out to Rocky for allowing us to come in and be a part of, of his platform. Mike, you, you know, I'm like, I want to be a radio host. And you're like, I know the perfect place. Malaysia being by my side and holding it down, doing everything. So, you know, and everybody that's out there has been, that's been supporting us. Every artist that sent us their music, we could not have done it without you. Every entrepreneur that says, Tina, I want to put your, mar or Malaysia, I want to put your, mar what we got going on out there in the world is you guys that's making this happen. This radio station is for you. Not for us. Yeah, it, it works the fact that it helps us build us our platform, yeah. but it's truly to let the world know what you guys have going on all around the world. So that's the beautiful thing. We used to be just yeah. Facebook famous, baby. Now we, the same. we're on 365 famous. So we're on the radio famous. Everybody's going to know about, you know, Flight Radio 105.7. Well, that's right. You know, and that's, that's one thing we're definitely out to do, like to uh, make sure that uh, our community is first, and then we will uh, go and continue on with the rest of the community uh, throughout the United States. So we're definitely out yeah. to help each and every community out there in the United States. Definitely. I love, I love that. You guys got to recognize and also realize that we're not like some multi-millionaires who came together and created a radio station. No, we were regular people who had visions, who had dreams. And we all came together as a collective to make this happen. So this is a great example of what 
black power can do, um, what we all can do if we all come together and decide to really go for a vision. And again, like Tina said, we want to thank all the guests. I still network. Um, I still talk to, I became friends with a lot of the guests that have came through here. I've learned so much. Mm -hmm. um, I've grown as a brand, as a person through this platform. So I want to thank all my mentors, which would be Tina, Rocky, and Mike over here. Um, for just, you know, help me get through this thing the last three years. You know? <laughs> Malaysia was scared. Y'all. Hey, Malaysia. You know, you know, Malaysia was definitely scared, Tina. Yeah, I didn't know. come into this game like this, y'all. Look, <laughs> Malaysia was scared, but it's funny how me and Malaysia met. Like, yeah. yes. I used to always see Malaysia. Malaysia used to always see me. And then I had a show, I think it was at Ellis. And yeah. that's me and Malaysia met. I was like, you Malaysia. She's like, hey, man. <laughs> It was just like, we have been knowing each other for years. So yeah. it's a beautiful, you know, your growth, Malaysia. Um, and, and girl, I can't wait. I, what you doing right now, you just showing up and, sh and I just can't wait, girl. I just can't wait. Girl, make some money. I can see the millions. Give me a dollar. I know, right? I'm ready to see the millions. Okay. Little sacrifice. You don't see it. Um, but yeah. And a lot of people too also doesn't know, like don't know that at some point y'all, Rocky was going to get this station up, but <laughs> I gonna put you out there, but the guy always has a plan, but here comes Tina with, where God gave her a vision and boom, here we are three years later. You yeah. can slow it down, y'all, but uh-uh. No, no, no. God had to <laughs> no, no, it's, de not it's definitely not a longer all. story than that. It is a longer story, but you know. <laughs> man, and, but you know, poor, poor Mike, I Poor Mike, Mike, you like y'all just don't know. Mike is like the hustler, the backbone. Hustler. He can, he's the backbone yeah. of holding all together. I'd be like Mike. I don't. Mike be like Tina. <laughs> don't start. I, 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 I. And you know, Mike, I, I promise you, people that don't know, you know, no matter where if Mike's involved in it, he is putting in yeah. a lot of work and he's getting it from all levels so mike just shout out to you for all that you you got the trophy of the the man of the year award MVP. watch out now the MVP. I, I, you know what i'll take that award too and yeah and i'm gonna get, present it to I'll you put it right down here in this basement and just collect it for everybody no i'm gonna, I'm gonna bring it to <laughs> because, your birthday because everybody really i'm just trying to tell you like everybody like played their part yeah you know for this station to to grow i just want to say that like you know I mean, because when I moved back here, you know, I hit Rocky up right away. I, I had to get something. I had to be involved with something. And I knew that this station uh, could could make a difference. Let me say it like that. But, um, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's a more longer story than that. But uh, we'll, we'll definitely talk about that another time. Yeah. But right now, I'm just savoring the day. Like, it's three years. Big shouts out to uh, The Ville. Yes. Big out to uh, uh, all of our first people, like Allison and Allison, and Miss Spicy, Spicy. Yeah. yes, Tony, um, Tony, aka Co uh, Conscious Coaching, that's showing yes. out. Yes, yes, and Tony, um, yeah, big shouts out to them, man. I'm telling yeah. you that that's how we, we got the bricks built. But Tina, can you name me like three of your favorite shows with guests? Of course, I love me some Randy Gill. You know, I love Randy. That's felt like that felt like that's my family. Like we family, yeah. we don't even know it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then, of course, I always say back to the ladies' night, right? And then I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna break it back to one more thing: is the the kids show we just did yeah. um, with the babies. Y'all know I love the babies. They're my babies' babies. Okay. Yeah. But okay. to see, I the reason why I love that so much is because these the 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 vision of our future from these kids guess what? They're not like regular kids, you know? Mm -hmm. And I would say not regular kids because their mindset is so far gone compared to the average kid. So I can't wait to see what they're going to be like years down the yes. road. And the reason why I was excited about the women's um, um, event was truly because of the fact that it brought women from all areas and all different walks of life together. So that was mine. Malaysia, what about you, girl? Ooh, top three. Um, definitely the women's night. I would agree with that. Just having that energy here yes. and having those women here and just hearing them speak, it was just phenomenal. And it was an amazing experience. And the food was what wow. made me go back to not being vegan. But uh, my second one would have to be um, one that, that, really, that really stuck in my head was when we had um, I believe Patrick. 
he came in oh, talking yeah. about being incarcerated for 25 plus years and his journey through that and um you know him you know being um acquitted of those charges and things like that that was a very influential one and um i also remember we had the ladies come in and speak about um the veteran house yes and we had the veterans come in and talk about their experience talk about what they're doing for other veterans who are coming off um coming out, out of duty and things like that so those three of the top three i just think that really stuck with me um and really had an impact on me you think about patrick posley just see him go through the trial and and, and see that over the years like how it played out and how he's yeah. now um acquitted on those charges he's innocent and he's fighting for his actual release from yeah. the you know state of illinois to say hey i am innocent yeah. um, right. see, um you know henry and McDa mcdavid and his growth in his his yeah. his, uh, his uh, academy um yeah it's something that said it's all about the growth y'all and you know the good thing yeah. about it is flight radio soul for discussion has been there yes. from the jump yeah We've been there from the jump. It's smacking. We've been there from the jump. So, you know, that's a lot of things that we we are super proud about. And I know we're going on, but we, we're excited, y'all. Yeah, we're just happy. <laughs> we just love y'all. And we just you so know, proud. It's, 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 you know, you know my, I can just tell you my top three is when um, we interviewed, oh my goodness. <laughs> like when we interviewed uh, the, the Army person with Wendy, that's what I just said. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 yeah that was good. And then I love the one with Patrick Sellers, most definitely. And then also I, I love the one with um with Shanir Wilson. And then mm -hmm. also, you know, my last one, my undercover, you already know, uh Jay Renee. Oh, yeah. Out there oh, in um, yeah, Jay Renee. Uh, Carolina. Yeah, she yeah. had a great interview also. Yeah. Man, you know, yeah. we had a lot of music interviews. Yes. Oh, a lot of music So interviews. many artists came through here. Yes. And we still love you guys. And we still, I mean, like, the music that we're getting, you guys, we totally appreciate. Like, it's, it's just crazy to see so many artists out there really pushing, really want to get their thing. And, and it just feels good to be a vessel that you guys can really come through and make that happen for yourself. Definitely. We couldn't be where we are without you and know that the, the, the growth from just being on Facebook to now being in, you know, a part of the radio station, um, you guys, this is where I think where you're going to see a turn for flight radio. We're about to get to get ready to take off. We're about to get ready to take off. And the reason why we're going to do that is it's time to expand. God has said, God said to us time, the time is now. So with that time is now, y'all make sure y'all hold on for us, baby. It's break time. Break time. <laughs> we'll be right back. So for discussions, Flight Radio 105.7, right in the Freeport area, y'all. See y'all in just a minute. All right, y'all, for the folks that don't know, we're actually on the radio right there in Flight Radio 105.7. We're on Facebook, and then we're on Live 365. We're, like, broadcasting all around the world. So in the midst of this, y'all, we're taking a quick break, but we'll be back shortly with all the hot topics for my laser Jordan. So y'all stand, stand still. Don't go nowhere. We got you. Wow. 
Oh, man, we're back here right here, man. 105.7 FM. I'd like to say what's going on. We're here live in Freeport, Illinois. Right out of Freeport, Illinois. Yes, right out of Freeport, <laughs> Illinois, Mike. I do. Listen, yeah. you already know, Mike, we are on Facebook, too, and they are fired up right. over here. Gonzalo said, hey, Mike, what's up with the water check, man? Got it. He's like, how much the there. water do? I'm in What's there, and you know, water? actually, I put in, I put in, listen, I'm going to be honest, I put in 24 today. Yes. All right. So for everybody that don't know what's going on with Mike, when I'm asking him about the water, we had Gonzalo on the show last week, and he was talking right. about the importance of, of drinking water. And Mike has got, you know, he accepted a challenge to drink more water, and he's on 24. He has to drink 60 what? Uh, you know, I'm supposed to be drinking uh, six, I think it's 60, 60 ounces, right? 60 ounces a day. Yes. Okay. And now I am up to like, I'm going to say probably, I do like about 30. I'm going to say about 30 ounces. Mm. That That's right. Progression. Day. There you Constant. go. Yeah. I'm doing about 30. I, 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 you know, first, now the first day I did like 20, 20, 20, like I did it quick and that was just too much. Yeah. You just can't take so I slowed that. That's slow down. Rushed into. Yeah, that was, you know that, that was that was had me too full of water. <laughs> Malaysia said you got to be consistent with it, so bite off a little bit at a time. I learned that from Malaysia on your yes. show. Don't bite off. Don't jump in there, baby. You gonna fail, but at the same time, understanding that if you do it in moderation and yes. build, 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 then you can hold yourself accountable just a tad bit more. Oh, girl, was here. And you know what, Mike, here is a great health tip. If you drink enough water, you'll be too busy peeing to be in other people's business. <laughs> oh. 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 Nutritional Wait facts. a minute now. <laughs> Boom. Boom. Somebody need to hear that, and I'm here to give it to you. Woo wee Man, now but, that right there. What they going to say about us, Malaysia? You that already know we're going to bring the hot tea. Now, you know that's going to be paid the hot tea, girl. What you got over there? <laughs> All right, you guys. <laughs> So there's been good. a lot going on both locally, you know, in Ashley. So we'll start with the local news. Um, we're going to go ahead and start with Freeport Mayor Jody Miller wins second term. Uh-oh. Yes. Give it up for her. I feel oh, like I'm I am here. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just give it up. we has got a hand clap for her, Tina. I you was like, is that a hand clap? I was trying to listen for the hand clap, y'all. And you know it's a long hand clap. Okay, so yeah, I put the long extended version. <laughs> Mayor Jordan Miller um, started off a challenge in Tuesday's election by defeating Ronnie Bush. Miller's unofficially collected 1,819 votes, accounting for 53% of the votes compared to 1,621 votes for Bush. Um, Miller was quoted saying, I am so grateful for the support that I received today and actually for the last four years. I've got a really great group of people who surround me, and I'm grateful for that. Freeport has had its challenges over the last four years, and I am very proud of our accomplishments. And I look forward to being able to continue a, to continue the long-term plan that the city has adopted. Don't need hmm. So, of course, in the fire radio, like we already said, we congratulate all the right. candidates, um, of course, that went out. And, you know, you know, try to go out here for the city. But congratulations to Jody Miller for being the winner. Um, and... We will we're gonna talk about this this low voting, the fact that it was like only three thousand people voted out of right. twenty thousand people that lived here. Yeah. You know, so um you we'll talk about that later, y'all. Y'all about to get a whooping. No, I'm, I'm gonna get it to you <laughs> now. You know, the thing about it oh is it's goodness. so easy to point out what didn't happen, how things didn't happen. You guys, this is the reason why a lot of the times if you wanna see somebody progress, you gotta take the time out to, to pay, take the proper steps. So when it all boils down, we know if for the people from both sides, if you didn't wanna see this person in the office or you did, you got two options. Number one, continue to talk about it, or two, start showing up the, at the city hall meetings, start being involved in what's going on, start holding these politicians accountable. I don't care if it was Ronnie Bush that was winning or Jody Miller that's winning. But the point is when it all was now, whatever you want to see in your community, you want to see that happen, you got to get involved. It does not happen by sitting on the couch complaining. Let's take those steps. Let's get involved. Let's get there. Hmm. Yes. And shout out to everybody who did take the time to go out and vote. So just to go out and vote. That's yeah. Right. yeah. Thank you very much. And if you also went out and voted for school board members as well, Congratulations to those who won um, for those as well. 
Rockford also has some winners too. We want to shout out those that were elected in Rockford. Tina was like literally like the news station. <laughs> Up to date, of, all of, poll of results. Up all poll results. Yes, like literally, yes. I have to go anywhere else and need no newspaper. No, she's the people. official. She's seeing. I was. Herself. You know, the, the reason why I was most excited because um, the Divine Nine, you our guys already know we had Ashley D. Williams on air. Um, so we were heavily involved with um getting a lot of the politicians onto our show which i was super excited about that so let me go down the list shout out to tommy mcamary he's going into his fourth year uh term um so super excited about that um as you guys know marisha brown who was running uh, for the uh, the rockford park district she won Tarina, my girl Tarina, Gabrielle, Tarina won, Gina Meeks won. I just keep on going. Mufasa won. I was super, it was a lot of Democrats that won. That was a beautiful thing. Um, at the same time, when it all boils down, I would tell y'all this. It is just because they won, things are not going to be perfect. We got to get out there, continue to support them in their new journey. A lot of them, these are their first roles. Um, so well, guess what? There is no handbook out there. Mm -hmm. So they're going to be learning on the go. Um, and um, shout out to everybody, all the mentors that's doing things behind the scenes to make sure that they're supported and held up in their role. So um, shout out to everybody that won. Yes, baby, yes. And then don't forget about, I believe it's Detroit, had their first, no, St. Louis, hold on, first Black mayor in St. Oh. Louis. I was excited yeah. about that as yeah. well. Like, I was on it. I so, felt so like that I was, was NBC. So that was in St. Louis. And mm -hmm. then also, uh, you know, down with our Mississippi family. Yes. And them, yes. Uh, like, um, listen, matter, of fact, matter of fact, Sandy, Sandy Price and Smith have, have won again. She mm -hmm. is still the yes. Yes. yes, she was another interview uh, that yes. we had. Uh, here on Sofa Discussion. So, man, congratulations to her, too. Yes. I, I, man, I'm proud of, like, our younger yes. Black, you know, uh, political people. Yes. Yeah. And, and this is where I say I'm so proud. The reason why I stood up and I, you know, stayed up late to watch this is because it's not about, it's, it's not about just the fact that we're looking for Black. It's the, it's the thing about it is the generation to come. To yeah, see yeah, the yeah. hopes to be yeah. able to say, listen, if I want to be mayor, if I want to change, I want to see a governor. I've seen, I, in the past, I've seen people that look like me, that walk like yeah. me, that talk like me. Um, and a lot of these folks uh, have gone to HBCUs. I got to give that yeah. a <laughs> um, So yeah. I'm super excited about that, you know? Um, so shout out to everybody that won um, in, in a new election role. So I'm excited about that. Yes, yeah, we absolutely love it. In other news, you guys, we have some more local news in Freeport. One moment here. <laughs> and as we sit sitting here, man, while we're sitting here waiting and all that kind of good stuff, man, don't y'all forget, coming up at 8 p.m. T.J. Jackson is coming up at 8 p.m. Freeport High School basketball <laughs> coach will be up, man, at 8 p.m. tonight, y'all, right here on Zoom. I tell you what, and right here on Flight Radio 105.7 FM. Whew. We got a lineup tonight, huh? Yeah. So in other news, we do have a 31-year-old bus driver from the Freeport School District has been charged with seven counts. Wait a of minute. We got we got we got to really concentrate on this. Rocky, you got to listen to this. All right, go ahead. <laughs> a 31, I mean a 31-year-old bus driver from the Freeport School District has been charged with seven counts of child pornography and is on administrative leave from his job. Albert Williams was booked in the Stevenson County Jail Wednesday. According to the jail's website, he's being held on a $100,000 bond. The Freeport School District released a statement Friday saying that the district is aware of the charges and cooperating with police. The allegations are among the worst that can be made against any adult, especially wow. a school district employee. The district said in a statement, the employee was immediately placed on administrative leave pending further action. Williams is scheduled to appear in court in this upcoming First. Wow. <laughs> I just had to say, wow. Man. Come on, What's man. The, the views a... in the opinions. I'm, listen, I'm, look, Tina, just give me a break here. Let, let me just go ahead and put this out there. I got to put that out there for you, okay? Well said. 
<laughs> Cover the legalities. Um, this is the second case this year, not this year, but the second case that has happened in the last few months with the Freeport School District and uh, one of their employees being accused because, you know, everybody's incident to proven guilty. Right. Um, right. Being accused right. of child pornography. Yeah. And you know, what's uh -huh. really kind of scary is the fact that there really is no way, um, unless they have prior charges to kind of weed these type of people out, um, yeah. because like I said, unless they have prior charges or they're registered as a sex offender, you know, there's nothing people can do, but they're still in the predatory mode and they haven't, there, there's nothing that can prove that they're this type of way, you know, it's hard for the school district to um, weed these people out. So I don't want people to sit here, but like, it's the Freeport School District that they didn't do the due diligence. And because I've been an employee of Freeport School District, they do do the due diligence, they do do they the do background the checks. Um, but if you're not a registered offender, then nothing will show. You don't have any type of background. Background, yeah. With that in it, it's not going to pull up. You know, so um, yeah. I, I Listen to your kids. Listen to your kids, listen to them, talk to them about, hey, what's going on in their schools, inappropriate touching, because a lot of times if your kids start acting up or they're doing something funny or they're hiding things, yeah, a lot yeah. of the time they've been touched or they're scared to say. So yeah, right. just listen to your kids and identify if something's going wrong. It's just sometimes what well, I think as we watch the last two to three folks that have, um, been accused of this they've been with the school district for multiple years, years. Yeah. And, and, and that's the scary part about it is because these teachers are hiding things so yeah. with that said i don't care if it's a school the the the, the school district workplaces you see it everywhere y'all so don't you know just don't go to the school uh freeport school district and hold them accountable get yeah, them right. prosecute them to the end of the road okay because when yeah. it all boils down they're not right. They're not right in the head. And they're not do if they're doing that to school, I'm pretty sure they've done it around family members. Get them. Talk with your yeah, family right. about it. Yes. And and also this particular individual also is in charge, was in charge of his local um youth program in his church. So uh -oh. yeah, mm. it's quite a few uh -oh. things going on. But like Tina said, so, definitely have those conversations with your children. That's right. And make sure they feel safe enough to come to you. Um, there was yes. an incident not too long ago when my son ran into the same um, thing at his school with a staff member, and he was uh, smart enough to come to me and tell me, "Mother, I felt uncomfortable. Okay. This is what happened, and it, it, you know, I felt uncomfortable. Is this right?" Then I'd explain to him, "That's not right," and then we had to have to go into the school, right. talk to the teacher, and that all got handled. Um, so the school mm -hmm. district does the due diligence because my son came back to me a couple weeks later and told me, "I don't know what happened to that man, but I never see him again." You know, mm -hmm. um, and so on and so forth. So um, definitely listen to your children and don't think that they're making up things. Don't think that they're, you know, this, that, and other. And even if your child is someone um, who has been known to act out a little bit more than other kids yeah. or a little bit of trouble, whatever it may be, um, still listen to them. That's right. Still listen yeah. to them. It's listen so to them. Don't say listen. shut up or yeah. try to cover it up. I don't know, because they may not be able to explain it to you the way they should. So if you take the time to listen to them, then you'll realize that, hey, you know what? They might be telling you something. So shout out to the parents that prosecuted their tail and made sure that they're held accountable on that, Malaysia. I like that. I, I like, I hate the fact this is happening, but we got to put it out there on the forefront for our community. As y'all know, so for discussion is all about putting it out there the right way so everybody knows what is going on in our community. So Absolutely. keep it coming, baby. What else you got? Absolutely. And national news, DMX is still on live support and scheduled uh -oh. for a critical brain function test later this week. According to TMZ TV, DMX is still currently on live support and scheduled for a series of critical brain function tests on April 7th to determine the next steps in his treatment, according to his manager, Steve. Um, as you guys previously know, he was taken to the hospital and hospitalized for an overdose. Yeah. Um, and this one was a very fatal, like I said, he's still um he's still on life support and they're preparing him for critical tests. So from the fly radio to the MX family, to his friends and to his fans, uh, we want to send positive vibes, we want to send 
Definitely. DMX has been fighting a long journey for many, uh, many of years. But what I loved about him in the last coming years is his connection with God. Um, I think he was fighting a lot of demons. And when these drugs, the, these drugs nowadays, it's a different type of drug. It's different than the Mary Jane, okay? Yeah. This fentanyl and everything. <laughs> how you, how you, how you figure that? Because what I heard, you know, okay. I don't I can't use no drugs, no nothing, okay, Mike? But what I heard, Okay. Listen, the, and don't uh, you and, and have, did did you see that that they were trying to pass it, you know, for the whole United States, like federal law, everything. Yeah, I saw that they were trying to pass a federal law that no matter how much weed you got with you, it don't even right. matter. Guess what? Don't you won't matter. you won't go to jail for it. I mean, it's legalized around the world already. However, what I would say is there are some of these things with the fentanyl and these, you know, you don't know what's in it. You need to know what's in your drugs, baby. If it's laced with all this cocaine and, and rat yeah. poison and all this stuff, this is what's truly killing people. Don't get excited about, you know, smoking that stuff if you don't know what's in it. I'm just saying, it's just, I'm scared, okay? I can't do nothing. I know if I even remotely took a puff puff pill, I'm dead, okay? <laughs> Wow. Because um, my heart ain't good. You know, what's really sad is the fact I took the time to do my little research and I, I listened to an interview with DMX kind of explain how he got introduced to drugs. He's only 14 yeah. years old. Right. And someone he looked up to, to as a mentor in the lacing. Yeah, in the lacing, um, you know, stuff they were you know, smoking out. And, you know, and the pain that I seen from that video. Um, and just him expressing how hurt he was because he was like, who would do that to a 14-year-old? Right. Because his mentor, he said, was around 30 at that time. You know, this is somebody he really looked up to, somebody he really trusted. He said, from that moment on, you know, a demon was born and, and so on and so forth. And it's just, it's very sad to say, I mean, to say this, he started he, at 14, and he's now in his 40s, near his 50s, you know what I'm saying? That's three, four decades of addiction, you know? He, he, he started off with weed. Then he started off with, went on to something else. And I think a lot of the times you don't think that you're addicted, but when you got to wake up and you got to smoke a whole bunch of it, then obviously you're addicted. You catch an attitude when you, they say you ain't got none. You, you know, <laughs> I mean, you addicted to it. And some people don't think that there's wow. a problem. There's no difference than like having a, a person that's an alcoholic. They don't see that them they're, that they're alcoholic. They just right. see that's, that's, you know, at that point, that's how they're nurturing their body. And when it all boils down, Right now, it's just a difficult time. And you see more people wanting to find something to numb the hurt that they're feeling yeah. right yeah. now. And instead, what they need is a little bit of love from family and friends coming in is to say, hey, y'all, it's okay. Let's figure out a way we can get off of this. Let's figure Absolutely. out. I have like, like one of my favorite DMX songs. What's your favorite? It's a Rough Rider I mean, <laughs> Anthem. <laughs> <laughs> You know, that's like one of my favorite DMX songs, you know. They were all lying yeah. outside his, uh, yes. they will play his With music outside. Yeah. yeah, I was like, you know what? He got you, some real food. You, hey, Tina, you remember that song? Yeah, you didn't hear me over here rapping. What's it really? Mean? I was, I was with you, like, I had you, man. <laughs> that's all I know. What's that, man? Man, listen. I wish I could hear it. I'm guess what since y'all move, I'm gonna act like I can hear that thing. <laughs> That's okay. I just had to put it out there. Yes. No. Man, big shouts out to DMX, man. That's okay. Great. Definitely. And if you're somebody out there that's struggling with addiction, definitely yeah, that's reach good, out. Man. Reach out and get I help. just had to throw it out there, man. A little DMX, man. You know. And don't be a, you know, the thing about it is what I tell everybody, because I've seen family members that, that struggle with addiction, you cannot go back into the same situation expecting the same, uh, same result. If you got, my cousin told me this weekend, he said, man, listen, I want to be in the same environment, so I got to leave because I need to do better for me. Um, and, you know, that's what we got to realize is that person that may be doing drugs or may be drinking or whatever the case, we can't enable them during this time, during their time, and provide them with the drink or provide them with the marijuana, or provide them with the drugs because they're trying their hardest. Don't give them that. Give them a pass and go on about your business so they can live their best life. Okay. Exactly. Exactly. I guess because they're grown. You grown, just because you grown don't mean you don't make the mistakes you keep on sliding back. Right. And please, to my young people, to my fellow young people, I don't care what these rappers are saying. Uh -oh, Let there be a me. lesson of what happens at, when these rappers go years and years and years with an addiction. 
mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? We we lost um I can't remember that rapper's name, but we lost a rapper uh last year um to drug addiction. So no matter what these rappers are saying or how they feel that is correct to them to cope with it, find your own healthy way of coping with it. If you can't find it yourself, reach out to counselor, dial an eight one hundred number, speak to a random person, do something. But there is help out there for you. Definitely. I think we need a commercial break. We need a commercial break. <laughs> we can go commercial break right now, man. See y'all later, man. 815-312-3172. You can call in right now. Right here, man. WQJT, man. What's happening? Free Porsche. All right, y'all, for everybody that's out there, y'all, not only are we live on Live 365, we're actually on air right in the Freeport area on top of being here on Facebook. So y'all just hold on, hold on, hold on, y'all. We got a couple of folks coming up. We got TJ Jackson, Freeport's very own um, coach of the high school uh, football team that's coming up and the boss, my Canadian friend, you already know from Real Life Matters and Talk It Out that will be joining us as well. So stay tuned, hold on, y'all. Don't go nowhere. We need y'all to stay right here, right here on Sofa Discussion Flight Radio. 105.7. That's right, man. We're back here, man. So for discussions. Man, we're here, man. Wednesday, man. We are celebrating three years tonight, right now, man. Please, y'all, don't y'all forget, man. TJ Jackson will be on at 8 p.m. Yes, yes. And if you guys are coming back right now, we were just on our hot topics. So we're going to hop back in because, you guys, this next one is low. This next one is so messy, okay? ESPN fires Paul Pierce after his raunchy Uh-oh. Instagram live video. Rocky, Have y'all seen the video? Have y'all seen? I just oh, look, oh hold on a minute. Wait a second. I just want to oh. add Rocky. I just want to catch him up. Rocky, have you seen the video? It was going down I up just, in there. I just saw a flyer of it. Mm. I, I I really didn't uh, get, get the logistics of it. So. Well, let me go ahead and help you with that, Rocky. It'd be my pleasure. <laughs> ESPN fires NBA analyst Paul Pierce after mm. the Boston Celtic legend posted a raunchy Instagram live video over the weekend. The video mm. featured Pierce in a room with an exotic dancer, shaking it. Doing it big. They was shaking it. <laughs> the cable, Doing it big. <laughs> the cable sports company. Um, network and it is working relationship with Pierce Monday. An industry source told CNN Business ESPN declined to comment on Pierce leaving the network. Representatives for Pierce also did not immediately respond for requests for comment. The news of Pierce firing was first reported by the front office's board. Mm-hmm. As many of you know, <laughs> Pierce was an analyst for the, for the network for multiple NBA shows. Those included the jump in the three game show NBA Countdown. The raunchy nature of the live stream was likely a breaking point for ESPN, a company owned by the family-friendly Walt Disney Company. Also, Pierce and the others in the video do not appear to be wearing masks or following the COVID protocols that have been or, by the network. Pierce seemingly, seemingly addressed the situation on Twitter shortly after the news broke. On Monday, Pierce posted a short video of him smiling with the caption, big day is coming soon, stay tuned, make sure you smile. The truth shall set you free. <laughs> Later on Monday, he tweeted again, I can't lose even when I lose, I'm winning. <laughs> <laughs> you know, if, I think if it, was just a, if it was just the twerking, I don't think it, he was smoking weed and everything else and invite He was late. He was told up. I done seen worse. I done seen worse. Prime reason why they need to legalize it. it I just seen worse. You, I mean, I feel like you can watch worse in a Meg the Stallion video. Right. But 
you guys, people have to really start understanding the importance of how people, important people take their brands. People mm-hmm. do not okay. play about okay. their brands. Like they that. do not play about their money. Right. If you and they sign part, contracts. Exactly. Yeah. Once You're you right. become part of someone's brand, you become their brand ambassador or their brand representative. Mm-hmm. Doesn't right. matter if you're working or you're not working. It, I'm, I'm the go. brand ambassador for Movement by Malaysia. But if you guys see me twerking on my off time, you gonna feel some type of way. <laughs> I, I feel like I would have thought you was going on. Yeah, you have to, you have to or, or the radio fitness. station. Like, no, I'm talking about like that raunchy. Nah, I'm talking about like uh, Paul Pierce kind of raunchy. The, the real. Yeah, oh. if I was the dancer in the video, y'all be like, wow, that's not a good representation representation of WQJT, right? So it's the same way with Paul Pierce. He signed a contract. In that contract, on or off time, you are expected to represent the station. Which is yeah. a family friendly station. You cannot get on Instagram with strippers and thongs, and one is massaging your back, and you just just out of there. You can't do that. No, <laughs> That's no. not good for your personal brand or ESPN. Now, and you know, I think she's definitely telling the truth, Tina. Yeah, no, I'm with her on that. And then on top of it, how um, tough the um, the NBA is on uh, as far as the COVID um, protocols and making sure no one gets sick from that and things of that nature. Um, I think that has a lot to do with it too, because they they tell you don't get out of groups, make sure you have your mask and stuff like that. But as you know, what you do at home is your thing. But I think the fact that he publicized it on top of him smoking marijuana. Now you know the folks up in head all the way up there, and the big dogs be smoking more than marijuana. But I ain't gonna put it out oh, there. The views of me of the guests and the host is not oh, that of my radio. Um, right, but. However, you know, to see a woman at a strip club either, you know, they go to the strip club. So I'm not too worried about that. I think it's just really a lot of the, uh, about the COVID, the mask, and then uh, smoking it on TV. Yeah, they, don't, they don't care what you do. Malaysia, a lot of the times they, you know, companies make you sign a contract that says, exactly. hey, from a media standpoint, if you do something that we feel is against our policy, you are at will. And which basically means if you're at will, they can terminate you for anything. And so Paul exactly. Pierce, you lost it, lost that, you lost that on that, bro. I mean, and I don't even mean to bring this old situation up, but it's even it's kind of like Nas and the Nike situation. People yeah. do not play about their brands. I'm gonna keep yeah. pushing that because I don't want any of you guys going off and trying to rip off something or not being aware of brand awareness because it means everything nowadays because a person's brand is how they make their money. So, um, yeah. but his response, I think it's kind of sad. You know, when somebody's going out bad, but they try to act like they're not going out bad. You went out yeah. bad. You, you, you just lost everything. You know what I'm everything, saying? Like, everything. And you try to, you, you record yourself smiling, talking about what's coming next. <laughs> you know, and I don't want to say okay. I don't want to I'm, nobody. Listen, I'm, I'm going to say it like this, you know, he should have known Better. better already right there out the gate you know what them women you get them women in that room it's and over. you start to smoking and he probably it's done smoke yeah, listen he probably I, done smoke some some i'm gonna drink the elephant in the room he was too old to be doing all that you <laughs> look grown to not know better it's not even about the activities that you did whatever you're a grown man like, you gotta do. it's like that you're too old Malaysia. as a Is grown he, man and that's somebody who's been a part of that with that uh ESPN multiple shows for some years. You're too grown. Malaysia, would that. it would it have been wrong Malaysia if, said if it would have never been would it, if it had never been shown? Yeah, because that's what you never know. He that's, why been see, about. that's why you don't right. see these basketball players who can be out here showing the stripper, showing the money. That's why you don't see them doing that. Even they understand that. Right. You, so now, so now, on that. vice versa, do you think that it's wrong for the rappers to do it? No, that's their brand. No, because that's their brand, right? That's their brand. That's because they, they got know, to have the women. They got yeah, to have the, that's, that's part the of their sex brand appeal. And yeah, ones. if he was if he was a manager for a rapper, that'd be different. I'd be like, okay, cool, but that's not, no. He wears a suit, right. he fits on. And then and then you got to know all the way down to who you're working with. His overhead company is Walt Disney. Yeah. <laughs> it's Walt Disney. They're family-oriented. Anything outside of that was never going to work. And you now, really Paul Pierce was, was, was a great basketball player. 
No, but the only I'm other thing that money. I gotta I gotta break this down, and this is will be the double standard. Malaysia, you know I like controversy, so but ain't no different than Taylor Swift on that dang old ball. I mean, what did I was down? Come on, honey. I mean, she was swinging on the ball all day, all day. But look, Malaysia said, "Tina, don't just." Stop. But no, no. But the only only thing I would say was that Taylor Swift has her own brand, so she has brand control. You know what I'm saying? But it's you know, like, like Taylor that. Swift underneath no, something, like she that. has brand control. Well, you know, she stepped not, away. She yeah. stepped away from yeah. at that time. She did step away from. I give you that. She stepped yeah. away from um the, the the network that she was on prior yeah. to that. I'm not yeah. condoning y'all. Y'all know I'm all about self love and all that good stuff. I want people to cover up and stop showing too much because then you get these kids out here thinking that's okay for them to twerk and everything. It's okay. So it, yeah, it, it, so it keeps starting the trend. You're right. Yeah, y'all get get it together, Paul Pierce. Now you're gonna be wishing and praying. Oh, like, yeah, I yeah. hope that you invested wisely. And like you said, um, even when you lose, you win. So we're ready to see what that win looks like. And, and we're gonna so, come back. So in other words, that that would he's, he's he's gonna he's gonna come back out of retirement or something to come back to the Celtics. No, he ain't coming back someday on Celtics. Man, they are fighting. Out, they're bro. fight. Listen, Rocky, they're fighting for playoff birds right now. Do you think that Paul Pierce can come? No, back? his elbows <laughs> hurt. Look at that man hairline. He was tired. Yeah, he was girls the girls the he can't he's, do that. He's too old, man. He you think too old. Yeah, he's hey, he's Tom rushed, Brady um, is not too old. Tom, that's a oh, sport. what do Tom Brady do? That's a different sport. He's young so football. Yeah, but he that's thought, a different sport. So a football. And he may run. Football. He only got to run. Yeah, you don't have, you can't mix apples and oranges. That's, <laughs> that's what you can't <laughs> Like I'm not gonna be messing now. Put it got mad. Uh, him against I these young people. No. Like he couldn't even handle the two strippers that was there. He was struggling with the two strippers that was there. That long having to defend himself. On the I was just trying I'm to figure what they were shaking. I was trying to figure out, get up. He I want to tell him, get up. He's thinking he's massage, and he just, he doesn't know. Anyway. Get up. Get up off the ground. Right. I tell y'all what, man, it's 747, man. 47 minutes after the hour, man. We're here at Soulful Discussions, man. We're celebrating three years, if everybody yeah. wants to know. Everybody's listening live right now on live365.com. All my Atlanta people, man. What's up, man? Big shouts out to my Cincinnati people. Robert Harold, I see you looking. Uh, I see you listening and everything out there in Cincinnati. Thank you for listening. Uh, big shouts out to all the people, man, in Philadelphia, man. What's going on to my man, Mac, man, man. He out there in Philadelphia. He's tuned in right now, man. He wants to say, man, Tina Renee is fine. Just to let you know, Tina. Hey. hey that, somebody in, that somebody in Philadelphia say you fine. She's but engaged. She's engaged, Mac, man. I just want to tell you that. Hey, y'all. How y'all doing? Ain't nothing wrong with that. Hey, y'all. But I'm not. I'm <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> No, you yes, don't. Well, I'm just kidding. I'm, 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 I'm going to have to cut my legs off, man. But uh, he, he it, don't want today, y'all. Hey, Conscious yeah. Coaches, a.k.a. my boy Tony said, you think it's wrong for the rappers to do it. it the rappers to do it. It wasn't wrong. What uh, He said to do it. He wasn't wrong was the color of his skin. It Only because his color and Walt Disney ain't no sin. Ain't no sin. He kind of messed that up. So, so basically, so, saying it's just the color of saying it. Y'all okay with it, with rappers being it, doing it? I think a lot of this is the color of his skin. Um, and then Walt Disney ain't no saint. No, they ain't no saints. I, I agree with you. I said. Listen, 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 um, big shouts out, man. First of all, big shouts out to conscious coaching, man, from the beginning of yes. the, all of this stuff. Um, and thank you, Tony, man, for all of you. You know the the time that you was here and everything on the help out, whatever. You're always welcome back here to come in to the studio and uh chat with us but um my thing is if it was undercover and private and other we people seen him, him we would have never known nothing no he been listen he's been doing that before yeah it this isn't this ain't nothing new yeah but but what happened was he got tied in with them girls and, I, then he, you, like, and then I said he smoked the wrong one. He smoked, he, smoked, he probably he smoked uh, wrong. pink yeah. bubble he gum was, or something. He was I sitting there like, was, hello. <laughs> Mike, what do you know about pink bubble gum? <laughs> he smoked pink bubble gum, man, in the wrong jar or something Jesus, like that. And I then, could not. And listen. Then said, he, it took us one himself to say, like, yeah, let's just go on Instagram or whatever and just show out. Them lies are getting everybody get you, caught up. No. Get you a friend that says when you tipsy, 
don't go on live, okay? Y'all to see Megan and Stallion. Y'all to see April and Fizz. Everybody get yes. drunk and want to go live. Y'all get you some good friends and say, All his friends were occupied. Yeah, and his friends were too occupied. That was that shaking going on. Gyrating. I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna leave it alone. All that shaking, well, gyrating. I on. do have a shout out. Shout out to my auntie, y'all. I'm on this weight loss journey. I gotta make sure I give her a shout out. Hey, auntie okay. Cam, she on here like, hey, I'm on this auntie life Kim, secret. Hey, auntie. I'm on a secret diet, y'all. Fifteen pounds down. I'm ready to show y'all my body. So, Tina, you say you on a secret diet right now? It's called secret. Yeah, my C S E A C R E. What is that? What is that, Malaysia? What? It's a, what is it's that? an all natural diet. It's an alkaline diet. So basically, what it is is nothing but fruits, vegetables. I basically consume that in the morning, and it's basically a meal replacement, Mike. Yeah. So instead of me getting up every day and eating that chicken wing, I literally have cut it down to be starting off with a shake in the morning time, start my diet at 11 o'clock or 12 o'clock throughout the day, and cut my eating time out at seven. And with the water, baby, I be drinking. I eat probably drink about eight bottles of water and I'm up all night. So yeah, I'm so like with that, the, the bathroom portion of it. But I'm trying to lose this weight for this wedding, honey. I gotta be there. I gotta be make sure right. I'm right and everything's sticking up. Uh, That's like up. ready. I can't have that extra fluffy fat in the front. I don't want it. You gotta That's go. What's up, man. The fat's got to go. Man, we here live, man. It's uh 752, man. 52 minutes after. The hour, man. We are, like I said again, we are here celebrating three years. And uh, a lot of people have chimed in and everything. A lot of people are listening. A lot of people are chiming in. I'm not on the live. Actually, I have my own live right here. And But uh, everybody's going live. And, you know, we're kind of celebrating and everything. And, yes. uh, man, it's real good. Because we thought the bill would be here in the yeah, studio. Yeah, he's coming What's up next to the week, Mike. The bill is coming next week. He'll be down um for a couple of shows i'm super okay. excited about that and then mike okay. uh he's working hard down there he's coming down just for a little bit um i know he's supposed to be participating in um marissa brown's birthday party okay um so he'll be down That's here good. for that he's working man he's all about the work man and big shout out to Marissa around, you know, of, of, of her beginnings and everything. You know, I'm going to give her a big shout out. You know, she was definitely another special guest here yes. uh, on yes. the Sofa Discuss Discussion Show. And then also big shouts out to uh, Shanir Wilson yes. out there yes. in Raleigh, North Carolina, man. He's listening in right now. Just like to say what's up to him. Uh, man, he was another uh interviewer here on sofa discussion. Definitely. And I gotta I gotta make sure I get one person and that's Julian Holt. I don't know if you guys saw that he started mm -hmm. his garden um uh, for Ellis uh high school. Okay. So he actually started a garden I want to say several years back in his at his home and he okay. created like I want to say eight to ten boxes um of of different type of fruits and vegetables. Oh, so that's what's now up. he has a grant that he's gonna be working right there at Ellis High School, um, which is gonna allow him to plant gardens for the community. I oh, mean, now that's what's up. up. You, you know, a, yes. That is so good. Yes, it is. Yes. So I wonder, like, like, do he have like a greenhouse or anything, or I, it's just they're, more? They're in the beginning of it, Mike. They're in the beginning stages of it. So right now, it just like just recently got the grant. I saw early part of this week. Um, so I can't wait to see. Of course, when, once they get everything um, off the ground, of course, I'm going to slide through there and be nosy um, and get an um, interview on the spot so we can see it. Um, but I'm excited about that because guess what? Now we get really, truly back to the roots and creating those organic vegetables and things that versus yes, you know, like stuff with the pesticides and everything in it. it. You know, you know, man, you know, big shouts out to Julian and Holt, man, on that. I'm telling you, that yeah. gardening thing, and uh, uh, getting that healthy kind of kind of uh, organic lifestyle, you know, I'm, yeah, yeah, nutrients. No. You know, because I'm about to get into that. So the reason why I'm like, I'm really about to get into that. See, the world is feeling. I just, I just, I just, Malaysia's loving it because she's a fitness girl. I'm just trying to say, like, I love like it. I'm really getting ready to get into those more cooking my vegetables again. And yeah. doing, I really got off track. Watch yeah. what it does for your I'm mind. Keep it real. I got off track. Watch what Malaysia, it does for your mind. You know what? Body. That is.
that's huge when you said the mind part. I think about like, you know, I know y'all saying like Tina's taking a step back, but I think mentally when you don't eat healthy, you're eating all those processed foods, the McDonald's and things of that nature. Yeah. You don't realize how what you're lacking. It's not until you get out there um, and you walk, you get out there and you actually um, start eating vegetables. You feel so much healthier. You don't feel as sluggish. You don't feel like um, so ran down. So like to see myself transition, Mike, you won't see it. Mike is good about walking though. Like he oh, yeah. he okay. Mike yeah. walk that thing out. But once you, you yeah, don't you, see that. You, 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 um, you let Larry or Rocky say it. He don't want me to walk anywhere. He listen. He's trying to restrict my walking. My guy come get you. My guy come pick you up. My guy do. Give listen, me no. I don't negative want you to fifty degrees. You talking about something? You gonna walk? No, you ain't. We gonna come get you. I, it's <laughs> negative fifty degrees outside, man. That's that, that. That's somebody who knows how to give. They gotta go no matter what. Listen, that's right. We don't know about Malaysia. Thank you, Malaysia. I know that family. I get you got to go. I got time. You Listen, I had to be at work. Yeah. And I'm going to work. <laughs> I'm be there. Whatever. Listen, that one morning, I walked like it was 21 below. And let yeah. me tell you, <laughs> I'm yeah. on the phone with, with Flash now. You know, big shout out to DJ Flash, man. What's happening with him? But I'm on the phone with him. And Flash is like, man, why didn't you call the cab? Because to me, I had enough clothes on and I'm walking. And you know you heavy, you got all them heavy clothes on. That means that you know you're you're easy. You're, you're no. easy. You're hot already. No, you're already no, you're hot. Crazy. You crazy being out there in that dang old cold. Crazy, crazy. gonna get it's sick. Gonna, you know, gonna be sick. Gonna have pneumonia. What what mama used to say? You gonna have pneumonia up your man, please. <laughs> man, that type please. of uh, employee bosses won't. Okay, it was <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. All right, y'all. Y'all already see who okay, we got man. joining in. Guess who we got? We got TJ down there. He up there smiling. I see him. Yes. Uh, we see you now. <laughs> so be before how y'all doing? The, hey, man, I'm doing good. TJ, good. how you doing? Hey, I'm good, man. I'm real good. It's good evening. Listen, <laughs> listen. It, it seems like TJ got the right perfect mic, Rocky. Oh my god. I know. Yes, I'm good. I was like, I, I thought he was. I don't know what like TJ Mike. is operating under, or I don't know it's what called. microphone. <laughs> It's called teaching. <laughs> I need it for teaching my class. <laughs> oh, okay. he, has a, he has a good microphone. The same type yeah, of mic. he got I that radio mic. I would, rec right? I would yeah. recommend that for Tina right now. You know what? Oh, he okay. has a headphone type of microphone. You, well, what's the brand name of that microphone, uh, TJ? Oh. Uh, let me take it off for a second. Yeah, <laughs> go ahead. Like, my pleasure. TJ said, this I have microphone my right is here. called Egghead. Egg it's called Egg an egghead microphone. I'm going to have to get that. I'm going to write that down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm going to write that hey, down. You know, you know I, I think like, you know, when we go into different places and we go on Zoom and we go live or whatever, the egghead microphone should be like the, the, the main microphone that we should always use. Oh, so yeah, like, definitely. Well, free that's, plugging them. That's, that would not be a standard, but for the Zoom. <laughs> DJ, he's talking about your microphone. No, that but, your but, microphone. That's, but that's a very good Hey, it, Yes, it, it is. I can't fault it because it was given to me by the school. So the school <laughs> didn't hurt <laughs> <purchase laughs> it. Like I said, it's, it's a very good quality mic. I, yeah. I have to recommend that one. I like that. Well, I'm going to have to give me an egg egg mic. Let's let's uh, do a break here real quick, man. We're gonna we're gonna take a quick station identification break, TJ. We're gonna be right back, man. Everybody man, tuned in, man. The sofa discussions, man, right here on 105.7 FM. All right, y'all, for everybody that's out there, you're, not only are we on Facebook Live, we're also right 
here in Freeport, Illinois, on top of Live 365. So coming up, y'all, we got TJ coming up in just a minute. He is the um, Freeport's newest coach um, of the boys' high school basketball team. So welcome, y'all, back to Sofa Discussions Flight Radio 105.7. We're right here in Freeport, Illinois, and we got Mr. TJ Jackson Man. from Freeport. <laughs> yes. Here, right here. <laughs> What's up, TJ? What's up? How y'all feeling? We're excited, hey. man. Hey, I'm excited too. T TJ is like super comfortable. Have you ever seen like somebody just come on Zoom and just be like super comfortable and just sitting back like, man, whatever y'all want to ask me, ask me. Man, he got that culture swag. <laughs> hey, you got to have well, something. There you go. Well, TJ, we about to jump right in there. Uh, tell everybody where you're from and um, what you got going on in the Freeport area. Sure thing. Well, I'm originally I'm from Bolingbrook, Illinois. Uh, grew up there. We moved from the west side of Chicago to Bolingbrook. Uh, lived there for almost all my life. Um, ended up leaving there and going off to college. Where I went off to college to Indian Hills Community College, played basketball there. Upon leaving there, I went to University of Tennessee at Chattanooga. Finished up playing there. I uh, didn't get drafted, but I spent a couple of tryouts playing with uh, the 76ers in their G League. Uh, played overseas. Most of my career was overseas in Austria, playing over there. And um, came back here, met my wife, played with the Rock for Lightning for about uh, two seasons. Uh, met my wife, and then uh, I went back overseas, and she stayed here. We, we was engaged then, and I was thinking, I'm, gonna, I'm done. I'm done playing. I'm, I always said, always the uh, the bride, never the bride. You know, always a bridesmaid, never the bride. Never, never could get to the big dance, get a chance to play in the NBA. But I, so I decided, I hung up my my shoes and decided to um, pursue my career because I had my degrees. I got my degree in criminal justice and a minor in psychology, and then I got my master's degree in higher education. So, so that's what landed me here in Freeport for 26 years. Been living wow. here for 26 years. So. Wow. So what got you into coaching? Um, it was almost like a natural fit. I mean, I, I, I love people. I love working with young people. I love being around just people, period. I've always been a people person. And um, worked at the Boys and Girls Club in town here, did a couple of camps and really enjoyed that and found myself at the high school then, working at the high school a little bit. And they asked me, you want to coach? I was like, are you serious? <laughs> are you serious? And then uh, that was, um, I spent about, what, 19 years doing that, coaching. At the high school wow. before landing a head coaching job now. So so playing with the 76ers, you know, my favorite player is Alan Everson. Um, you know, yeah. I'm just saying. Yeah, yeah. I'm old, so I didn't get I didn't get a chance to play with him. I'm old. <laughs> <laughs> so question for you, who's your favorite basketball player? I'm gonna have to go with the man, Jordan. Okay. I have to go with Jordan because I, okay. I played against him and I and I know how, man, he's a super nice guy, man. Very competitive, as you all probably know. Very competitive. Wait, wait, nice. wait a minute. Wait, wait, wait a second, TJ. TJ, hold on a minute. Sure. You played against Michael Jordan. Yeah. TJ, <laughs> what? come on, man. <laughs> Tell me something. Did you blow in his ear? He said, <laughs> did, you, he was blowing, did you blow in his ear like um Mike? Uh, what, what's the guy name? Of all of me, shake I was, your hand. I, just, I didn't I blow in his ear. I didn't shirt. blow in his ear. Did you, did you mess him up when he was trying to shoot a free throw or something? Nope. No, uh, what's his name uh, for Indiana? <laughs> Remember oh, when he blew his, yeah, uh, and LeBron's ear. LeBron. Uh, blew in LeBron's ear or something like that? No, that was. That was um. What's his name? Um. Uh, I know you're talking Stevenson. about. Stevenson. Yeah, yeah, Stevenson. Yeah. Stevenson. Yeah. Oh. TJ ain't gonna never come back on so <laughs> this. I just wanna this. know if you he if gonna... you had a chance to blow in Michael Jordan's ear like. Stevenson Absolutely did. not. <laughs> not. <laughs> oh my gosh. I was just in awe. Oh, this man on the court with us. I'm like, wow. But hey, hey. you were shocking all. You were shocking all right now. But hey, but you had to play though. That's the thing about it. You That's still got to play the game. So hey. Wow, that's him. Yeah. Mike, I'm um, just lost for words with the blow in the ear. I'm still just lying. I'm just, I had to I had to throw that out there because when he said that he played against him, yeah. I just wanted to know if he tried to throw Jordan off or something. That's all. 
I clap mm-hmm. would have said better, but no. <laughs> 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 oh, okay. So PJ. Yeah. So what is your philosophy on coaching and its relationship to education? Sure. I always tell my guys, and this has been something that I live by, uh, I'm your coach for life. I tell my students that I'm your teacher for life. If I feel like if you come into my sphere and you come into my circle and my life touch your life and your life touch my life, we're joint for life. So that's my philosophy. And all the guys know that. I had uh, a guy stop me in the store the other night um, and say, hey, coach, what's up? And I coached him years ago. And I was like, what's up? How can I help you? What can I do to help? And that's how I think that's how I grew up. That's how my mom and dad taught us. Hey, if, if we got somebody in our life, you're in there forever. So that's my biggest philosophy. I'm your coach for life. I love that. So what are some key values that you teach your kids on and off the court? Sure. That was, the number one thing that we tell our kids is, is integrity. I mean, that's the number one thing. I always tell them from, from, from the jump, since being the head coach, if I walk out the gym and I tell you to shoot free throws, I should be able to walk out the gym, get a drink of water, walk back in the gym, and you're shooting free throws. I should have someone else running around. should have someone dunking, trying to do a different layup, and just doing, doing exactly what you have to do when no one's around. There that's why I tell them. So that's, my, that's, that's, that's one of several I have, but that's the main one because that's something that these young kids need to know that, hey, I got to act right no matter who's around, no matter if no one's around watching me, I got to do what I have to do. Definitely. So TJ, you know, growing up, I, I know growing up in my days, it was always, hey, you got to win. You got to win. Tell me your philosophy uh, on winning versus losing. Winning, winning is, uh, is big. I mean, I, it's, it's big to me. I, I love to win. I tell all of them, I love to win. I mean, I, I don't like to lose, but reality is that does happen. So I try to let them know and, and be, and try to teach them through the game that hey, the games we lost that's, that's, that's something that we got to take back and come back and practice and see what can we do better? What can we fix? Just like life. Sometimes life's going to hit you with a blow. You got to step back and say, okay, what did I do? What did I do? How can I fix this? And not always point the finger and say, well, that team cheated or they, they did. Uh-huh. Sometimes you got to look at the mirror and say, what did I do? I, I had a role to play in this. And, and we didn't have a, a really, really good season. We, we was three and 11. So we had a lot of those self-reflection <laughs> moments right. in my first year. And, and the thing about it, those, those guys stuck with it and they bought into it and they really live by that, by saying, how can we get better um, every time we stepped in the gym to get practicing? Definitely. What do you think are some of your greatest strengths as a coach? My experiences. I mean, uh, living it. I mean, playing in the NCAA tournament. We had a chance to play, just, just, just went off. I got a chance to play in that. That's a big show and that's a big deal. Uh, just living in my experiences is just trying to teach them through my experience and learn from them and help them learn through their experiences. Sometimes we talk so much and push out things on them. Sometimes we got to step back and look at their experiences and say, okay, how can I teach you through what you just learned? Mm-hmm. And that's what I try and do. Definitely. And, and TJ, I have a question. With COVID going on, how has coaching and dealing with the COVID, how, how was that experience? Um, it's one of those things where, I'll be honest, I don't know, because I never did it. It was, if, if it's hard, I don't know. If it was easy, I don't know. I just adjusted, and I, that's not saying I'm doing anything special, because teaching at the high school, I mean, this is my first year teaching, so I didn't have the traditional classroom. Coming from the college side, I, I taught at the college side. Uh, you know, we always did online things throughout college. We always used technology, but in the high school, I was like, okay, Zoom, let's Zoom, <laughs> because we've been doing it. But but that said, it was just it was it was it was some challenging moments because the dealing with the kids and dealing with the young men. So we did a lot of zooming, uh, a lot of coaching went on Zoom where we'll we'll pull pull them together and have a coaches meeting this way. Sometimes we couldn't get together, so we did a lot of zooming and a lot of uh, uh, conversation. So really, the good thing about it, getting them to talk, and sometimes yeah. these young people don't want to talk, but this here kind of forces you to talk. Um, and communicate versus uh, sitting behind that video game all day doing, mm-hmm. watching that communication. Though. So it was fun to see them get in technology and talk. The rule was everybody turn the cameras on. Everybody yeah. cameras on, nobody cameras off. So it was challenging. I ain't going to say it was perfect. It was challenging, but um, we just fought through it. 
and and good things came out of it. I mean, the good thing about it, kids communicated. Another good thing about it, that's another way I can coach by connecting with them versus hey, I can sit out of a meeting, say, hey, everybody get on Zoom tomorrow night at blah, blah, blah. Boom, we're done. <laughs> Okay. Um, and also, I do want to ask, what has been the hardest part about coaching overall this year? Um, just me trusting myself. I mean, you know, being an assistant for 17 years, you know, you're sitting on the side, listening to someone else talk and say, mm -hmm. and then now you got the reins and now you got to be like, okay, I got to make those, make those make decisions. <laughs> So that was challenging. And, and, you know, some was good, some was bad, but I got to say, I had some great assistant coaches that really um, had the heart of the young people. And that was all about seeing them get better. So my assistant coaches did a, um, a huge job. I mean, I couldn't have done it without them and their uh, faithfulness to just, man, wanting to see us uh, develop and get better. I mean, when I look at your experience that you're bringing to the table, I mean, come on, like, <laughs> TJ. Like, I think, like, um, they better get ready for Freeport High School. And, it, you know, the thing about it is you said three, three, you guys are 311. I think that was the start because now what you're doing is going back to build a foundation. So let's talk yeah. about the foundation that you're building at the Freeport High School is to get them up to that winning level um, and, and having confidence within themselves. Well, I think you hit it on the head, Tina, was confidence. You hit it on the head. I mean, that's the one thing that uh, going in, uh, and I don't, I don't use it as an excuse, the young men I had, I had no starters. Everyone came off the bench. Some didn't, wow. play, some didn't play at all. Yeah. Uh, that's so, a struggle. So really, it's one of those things where I had one young man, he took a shot, and he looked at me, was that a bad shot? I'm like, man, get back and play D. You play, get the shot. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, go play defense. Yeah. But then I realized oh. that's what I'm up against. But that said, Tina, it is. Confidence is the number one thing. It's just trusting trusting themselves and then also telling them to trust the system that we're running. Yeah. Trust the system. I mean, I don't want to put it on me. It's not about me. It's about the system of my assistant coaches and myself that we're coming up with. Because if you put it in a person – and if that person fail, you know, young man going to look like, oh, you fail versus fail put it in the system and say, here's our system. Now, the system is the thing that we can fix. So I always tell people machines don't break. Folks break machines. <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> you got to run that machine. So if people break the machine, the machines don't break themselves. So if you, okay. you put the system in place and the system works, now we can say, how did we not do the system? So. You know, back in the days, I used to hoop. I used to play guard. All so right, I, that's the right. reason I could get in there. But I remember my yeah, coach. Tina, you played guard. Yes. Mike, I would have played in the basketball program over in Hawaii, but I tore my uh, leg, my man, ACL. Man. So that's I didn't so get good. A you didn't know that, Mike? No. Wow. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm a super time boy. And uh, uh, <laughs> Alan Iverson and Mike J, uh, not you, the other Mike, Michael Jordan. Um, I used to go and watch them every year as a kid at the um, wow. at the, the stadium. So, you know, coaching is different. I, my coach used to cuss me out. I know you was back in those days when they used to, you know, get your down there. You mm. give me 20 laps. How's mm. the coaching, like the coaching styles change? And what are you, how are you using some of them old school techniques to get them into some of this new school, uh, school standards? Well, it's, man, you, you guys must be, you guys are in tune. I'm going to say this. You guys are right in tune because these are the things that I hear from other coaches across the Nick 10, my little coaching circle I'm in. Mm -hmm. And hearing them say things like that, I tell them all the time, I'm, I'm not a yeller. I'm not yeah. a screamer. I'm more of like, let's fix this. And how did we Are you a looker? It? Do you look at it? I look at it. Oh, yeah. Like, I, I give them side <laughs> eye. I get them side eye. But, but these young people these days, if you yell at them, they're folding up. They fold. yeah. They're That's, folding they, up. They're folding up. You're so right. And these young people today, what so they want right, to hear, what, what they want to hear more is not so much what I did wrong, it's how can how I come can out I? of it? How, yes. can I, how, do, how do I fix it? How do yeah. I fix it? And so that's what I did. I mean, many times I went to get my old school hat on but i'd be like hold on <laughs> you know uh -huh. so i wasn't a yellow but i found my the philosophy i use is working 
because I got young men coming to my room. If you got young men coming to you saying, hey, I'm okay, Coach, I, I got some homework. Can I come to your room and do some studying? Especially our young African-American guys. When they come to your classroom and say, can I come study in here? That's, that's, that's that doesn't amazing. happen if you're a yeller. If you're a yeller and a screamer and a person who's just putting people down constantly, that doesn't happen. Not yeah. saying it's easy for them. Not saying I make it easy. No, I, I get on them and ride them. Now. I let them know that's wrong. And that's dead wrong, and that's not gonna ever happen again. So they get that, that chastisement, but it's not that degrading. Because back, you're right, Tina. I used to get degraded. I got cussed out on CBS in front of my mom and daddy. I went to my dad. I said, "That coach crazy." He said, "Well, what'd you do? Well, fix it." Then. Well, fix <laughs> I thought, it, I, thought yeah. I thought I'd get some sympathy. He was like, "What? You shouldn't have did it." Then I'm like, "He cussed no. out on TV, man." <laughs> you ain't gonna say nothing. To him. Go get him, daddy. <laughs> Well, yeah, I remember did. those days. Man. <laughs> oh, yeah. What you got for relation? Well, can you please tell us your thoughts on the phrase "I can't" versus "I will someday"? How would or are you leveraging those individuals you have mentored to inspire others? Good. Well, I can't. I, I, I mean, to say that I don't use it is just, is would be lying. But I try not to put that more in my vocabulary, and I try not to have have the young men say that. I always look at the word, I think you guys hit on this someday, or hey, when I, mm -hmm. or when we do this, when we start winning, it's not so much, I can't. So that's just hard to do. I mean, we in society we live in, it's hard to do. So I try not to use that. But the biggest thing that I try to do as far as mentoring is I always tell them that in order for you to be a good person, I think in my, in my, my philosophy, is what are you thinking about other people's besides yourself? There you go. I mean, and, and you probably you probably get it by now. I'm very, I'm a youth pastor. I'm a youth, I'm a pastor. <laughs> My trade pastor's kid grew up. And that's always, always in philosophy with us is looking at someone else's needs besides yourself. I Definitely. Mean, that's, and that, I know that sounds cliche. That sounds, it's not perfect. It doesn't, it doesn't work every time. I don't do it every time, but that's something that I try to live and do to my own kids, uh, my own flesh and blood sons and daughters I have here. Just think about somebody else. How can you Definitely. help someone else out? So mentoring, we do start a mentor program. We're going to start lower in the lower levels with the fifth, sixth graders. We're going to start having our young men with COVID. Obviously we couldn't do too much because of COVID, but hopefully things are back Next year, when things get back together next year, we're going to start the fifth grade level, start having our young men go over and mentor them. Uh, one of my coaches already started at the Boys and Girls Club where they had took uh, a couple of young guys and they're mentoring, mentoring them now. Uh, so we started and it's got to go down low. And I think that's the philosophy. We got to give it to them now versus keep waiting and saying when they get older. Do it now. Definitely. Do it now. Definitely, TJ, hold that thought. I love everything you're talking about, about mentor. We're going to take a quick break and we'll be back. For the folks that's out there, y'all, not only are we on Facebook, we're actually on Flight Radio 105.7 in the Freeport area. On top of that, Live 365, all around the world, baby. So y'all hold on, stay there, don't go nowhere. Coming back, we got TJ and then we got the boss, y'all, from Canada. So hold on, hold on, hold your horses, honey. Hold up. Stay there. Man, we're back, man. I tell you what, we got T listen, TJ. I know you, I know you deal with a lot of, I know you deal with a lot of kids and and uh with Freeport's track record of of basketball history. I'm from Freeport, all right. I'm an 85 graduate. Okay. And still I am waiting for <laughs> the Jamal Meeks. Uh <laughs> listen, I can name a whole bunch of them. But and, who who do you think like right now is your? I'm just gonna say that I don't want you to be biased or anything like that. But your MVP of your team. We 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 <laughs> we did select on one. Spot, you put me on the spot, but that's that. Hey, that's that's that hot seat for coaches. We did pick one. But, okay. you know, your traditional MVP, I look at it differently. So we did okay. pick one, and it was Keegan Powell. 
He did okay. a great job for us. He played really big for us. But I also had my pick, as they asked me as the head coach, I said I would pick my point guard, Jamar, because okay. he's the one, my, my guard, he's the one that I look at that says Keegan Im impacted the game. I mean, that he impacted the game where coaches played to stop him. But Jamar affected the game, meaning that he was I love it. He was all over the place. All over the place. Yeah. He he had my okay. voice out there on the floor, or okay. he can just know, I could just know he about to run this play because he can feel the game. And that's yeah. what I had to teach him. It wasn't, didn't happen it. overnight. I had to teach him. So he was my MVP because as a short 14-game season, he had to pick, and I had his curve as a learning curve was way up. I said, you need to pick yeah. this up. I said, and I need you to do it sooner than later. And he did a good job. He did a good job. So, good all right, TJ. Well, I'm sorry, Mike. Go ahead. No, I'm saying big shouts out to them two. Them two guys in there helping us to, uh, you know, pick up the the pret surprise. That's all. Yeah. Definitely. We're gonna try to bring that back, Mike. We're gonna try yeah. to bring that. We're gonna try yeah, that to bring pretzel that pretzel pride. Back. Like that's yeah. that's like something big with us. Like you know that pretzel yeah. pride. Like people bring that. You know, in other words, students bring that pretzel pride within the other athletes. That's yeah. around them. Let me say yeah. it. Well, I tell you, when I first came to Freeport and you and Malaysia talked about pre pretzels, how the pride that y'all have just speaking about it, y'all was smiling. Heck, I wanted to be a pretzel. Shoot, I'm like, what does it feel like? I mean, I want to see what it's like to be right. a pretzel. Um, but you know, okay, TJ, we like to give a little controversy, so I'm going to throw it out there. Did you right. hear about what took place with Paul Pierce? I don't hear everything. I didn't hear everything, so I can't but drastic, I heard parts of it. I mean, <laughs> uh oh, <laughs> but, what you hear about? We're gonna give you the scoop, but let's go fill it in. What you wanna, hear about what Paul Pierce was doing? He was just all, I, all my all my guys kept saying that. Did you hear what he did? But no one would say, so I didn't, I don't know what happened, and I don't have I'm not uh, on social media that well that much. So, okay, let me give you all the scoop. If I miss some, fill it in the blank, Malaysia. So, Paul <laughs> Pierce was at a party, okay, and mm -hmm. he was around women that was twerking. I don't think this had nothing to do with it. But at the same time, he was smoking Mary Jane, honey. And then on top of that, okay, that's what I said. He didn't have no mask on. And then he right. was inviting women to come over to get some of that money, honey. What'd you think? He got fired. Well, he no, he's no longer with the company that he was with. I'm not going to say he got fired. He got fired. Um, <laughs> but hey, what'd you think? Well, <sighs> what's your thoughts on it? I'm going to go back to our college days. I know he, he played for a big time program and they always told us yes. what you do in the public can affect you, whether it's positive or whether it's negative. I'll never get that from our PR person telling us that where you at, you may think it's, it's everybody's there, but you there makes it a big deal. He said, if student A do it, it doesn't make the news. It's <laughs> just student A. If you do it, it's all over the place. He said so. I mean, like you said, everybody was there, but who's who? Who are we talking about? Exactly. I'm sure everybody else was telling. Everybody else was saying the same thing and doing. It. It's just that those are the things. Those are the consequences that comes with being in the spotlight. And now, now forget that. Go. I feel bad for him. I I, I know he. I'm not, I don't know Pierce, but I heard about him. I heard he's a man, a super nice oh, no. guy. I know that. But well, you know, sometimes you get caught up. I mean, as far as a person, as somebody said, he's a nice guy as a person. I I passed in cross as much. Uh, when we did cross, it was always I never got a chance to talk to him, so I can't say I really had a conversation with him. But I always heard he was a nice guy. But unfortunately, man, I didn't know that part. But yeah, it's that's that's why I tell my kids what you do, you got to be careful. I've been teaching my young men. A couple of them going off to college. I said, man, listen here, when you go to college, you are gonna see everything. Yes. I see y'all think y'all saw some stuff here. This is right. nothing. <laughs> yeah. This is nothing. Yeah. I told my daughter the same thing. I told my daughter, my, my, my baby girl, when you go to college, honey, you gonna see everything. <laughs> definitely, definitely. Well, TJ, right. before we get out of here, we want you to leave us with some last minute words uh, of wisdom and any shout outs that you may have. Uh, my last minute words is just be there for people, be there for people, be willing to, to, even though if it gets tough, even though you feel like you gave your all and you get, you get shot down, it doesn't work out. 
you know you did your best. That's how I feel. Even though, just be there for people. Be there. In this day and time especially, we need each other. We need to be better human beings to each other. Um, and last, shout out to my wife. I know she's not watching because she got her own. She's doing her thing for our store. We own Twice as Nice. Shout out to my girl, my boo. Man, I love you. Shout out to Twice as Nice, man. My girl, man. That's my yes. girl. My honey, <laughs> my kids, my mom and dad. And shout out to you guys. Thank you for doing this. This is huge. I pray that this just blow up even more, man. Oh, man. Appreciate you. you. Guys, just just go nationally. <laughs> no, we hey, already we're already national. national. We're worldwide. <laughs> I mean, I mean, where we got Big. folks coming in, dropping. Yes. Yeah. Who cool cool to cash? Yeah. Y'all said, TJ, tell everybody where they can find you. Hey, you can find me on Thetford. Um, I'm on Facebook. You hit me on Facebook, Thetford. Uh, I got my social media as far as Instagram, uh, Jax1105. Hit me up. I'd love to hear from you. Freeport Nation, go Freeport Nation, always. Yes. Once oppressor, long. always oppressor, right? Yes, <laughs> yes. Oh, you already know it. And then also, Thank you before, so much, before, we, before we go, now, Tina, I just want to tell him that also we want your MVPs on the radio. Oh. We want to interview them, you know. We no, want to interview on. them and tell them their experiences that they have uh, during, during their Freeport Pretzel right. um, experience. All right, I, I let him know. One just text me just now asking for some advice. Want to know if he should, what school he should go to and how to talk about college. Uh, One just what college he should go to? Oh my goodness. Man, yeah, he just great. texted me now, so I need some advice, coach. So, hey, I'll let him know. And that's my MVP. So, yes. man, that's all right, TJ. Well, we got Thank one you. question to ask you before you get out of here. No problem. What's your favorite radio station that's, that's in Freeport? My favorite radio station is, what, is it 105? Point seven. Yes. Yes. I love you guys so much. Love, love you too, so man. Much. Thank you so much yes. for joining Thank us. Thank you guys. <laughs> love you. Peace. Love it. Love it, y'all. And y'all heard what TJ said. Let's not get off of that. TJ said he wants us to have more money, okay? Y'all make sure y'all donate to Flight Radio. Y'all, we need that cash in order to What happened, Tina? Hold on a second. We're trying, we trying to get you up here. Hold on a second, Tina. We're trying to get you in here. Man, that, that was a great interview. Yes. Most definitely. Big shout out to TJ. Yeah. And he's trying, to, he's trying to bring back this pretzel culture of basketball. I remember Leroy Dixon, Troy King. I don't remember none of those. Me and Malaysia. Yeah, I know. Who, who are those? I'm a free for, I'm a free for, to come this, this, will, this will graduate 20 years before <laughs> me, so I, I ain't going to waste my time. Man, I can remember some legends in free for pretzel history of basketball. Yeah, you know, to see the, um, I would say just to see the momentum and the culture of a pretzel from Anthony, um, the list goes on from coach after coach, their, their belief in their team and the focus on not only just being a, a, a player, but working on things outside of schooling, whether it's going to college, their focus on the community, mentorship. Those are two, three, well, I would say three things that to me is very important to building their own identity. And I love that. I love that about TJ. I love that about Anthony. Y'all just keep on, keep on taking care of our babies. That's all I'm saying. Uh, well, y'all coming, <laughs> coming up in, coming up in two minutes. Huh? Coming up in two minutes, y'all. We got the boss. She's on her way into um, the Zoom right now, I see her climbing on in here. For the folks that don't know her, um, who she is, uh, she's from the hit show Real Lives Matter and Talk It Out with my brother from another mother, Chill. So y'all stay tuned, stay close to us, and y'all will be right here with the boss shortly from Canada, y'all. <laughs> Well,
All right, for the folks that don't know, not only are we live on 365, we're live on Flight Radio 105.7. Okay. I'm dancing with them. <laughs> Don't feel bad, boss. I can't hear nothing, but they dance, and I want to be dancing too. <laughs> hey. <laughs> They're dancing. Mike is getting it tonight, okay? <laughs> Him and his little finger, he's just holding up. That's right, man. We're back here, man. So for discussions, man, it goes down right now, man. Man, we got the boss man in the building, man, right now. What's happening? <laughs> It's going down. Freeport me. is pumped up, man. Freeport is all over the place, man. They are pumped up right now, man. What's going on, the boss, man? What's happening, man? Tina Renee, you got it. The boss, listen, the boss is the boss, y'all. For the folks that don't know her, she's going to introduce herself because she's the bomb.com. <laughs> introduce yourself, Miss the boss, please. Well, for the world. well, hi, everybody. And um, thank you for having me on today. Um, D boss is actually my, my nickname, but because my first name is Darlita and you can see on the screen, the last name Bostick. So that's how they got D boss. Mm. So I know. Yes, we got so, D boss. <laughs> D so authentic. boss. So I'm not a lot of men and a lot of people say, oh, you're calling yourself the boss, but you know, unfortunately. Hey, at the I end, end of the day, day, you're a boss. At the end of the day, you boom. are a true boss. <laughs> I watch you. I watch you now. I'm telling you, you're a true boss. Listen. The wow. balls do two shows. I mean, I'm trying to figure out how you do it. Tell everybody about your two shows that you're working with right now and the network that you're, you're on. Well, or on um, right now, I do Real Life Matters. Real Life Matters is me. I'm the host of it. And it's a, it's a power-packed, inspired show that features companies, artists, and brands, and whatever. If you have a good story, like I interviewed um, Tina Renee and her journey. And, uh, and I'm also a co-host on uh, Talk It Out with Chill. Uh, mm -hmm. William Reinhardt and um, our shows are on Care Vision and it goes out to 12 million people. And I'm in Toronto, Ontario, Canada, the part of where everything's happened, where the Raptors won. <laughs> Hold on a minute. You had to put the Raptors in here. She did. She so, did say that, that. That's how you're trying to do this, right? She's trying to start some stuff over here. No, listen, listen, listen <laughs> I'm just... glad that Rocky is not going to start with you. But... We the North. We the North. <laughs> <laughs> So 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 how you so how you feel about uh, a eight one five player almost being one of the highest players on the Toronto Raptors? Well, I well we like as long as we're we're gonna start winning because you know they put a lot of money into that uh, into mm -hmm. a lot of old money yeah. into mm -hmm. that team. Mm -hmm. okay. People finally okay. got paid. <laughs> yes, <laughs> y'all was being stingy at one point in time. Yeah. Being stingy, trying to win a game with no money. Come on, give us some right. money, somebody. <laughs> and then we so got our boy Drake. To... Drake. Drake, Drake could amp it up a bit, so yeah, it's all, it's all good. The now, boss, you're you a true basketball fan. She's a true basketball fan. Yeah, yes, I played is. basketball. I played college basketball in for month. <laughs> oh, I played oh, for oh. Dawson Blues in Montreal, Canada. And, uh, yeah. you know, I played for a while, but then there was no career in, you yeah. know, back then at the time where the women were in there. So I said, what am I playing this five days a week for? It's not going to yeah. make any sense. So, oh, wow. <laughs> you know, women are underpaid. Let's talk to somebody because like I was looking at the, 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 you know, the, the salary of a woman versus a man. Think like, okay, we get paid 250,000 where men is making like 45 million. Give us some money too. Golly, of course. <laughs> oh, we got to go back into our, 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 our um, what do you call it, corporate America you. functions. <laughs> oh, I know, right? That's what they're trying to tell us. That's what I, it I is. did law. I did law. So that's how I came out into this, the show. And I didn't know where I was going. You know, God just, he, he took me yeah. through that. So I didn't even know I was going to have a show and I was going to end up here. And, and now here we are. It was a long road, but, you know, we're doing it and our shows are trending. Um, 
on on the uh, on Carib Vision, Bell Five Network, in the twenty two countries. People are watching this, but it's hard. It's hard because you got to keep everybody up and awake. And but we're in yeah. prime time in the in the night, so it's good. Yeah, definitely. So, what made you go into? You say you know it just so happened to fall in your lap. How did it all start? Well, when I you know what happened, I did law with my background and I worked a lot of corporate America mergers, acquisitions, takeovers, all that other stuff. So someone had said, oh, you know, maybe you'd be good at sales. I said, sales, I hate sales. <laughs> <And then, laughs> you don't like sales either? I, I, you know, what most people don't understand is that I used to do, uh, you said have 13 markets, health and life insurance. I sold that for the state for years. But I was like, I don't like this. I really don't. <laughs> but I like, but I like, but then I took it and I got trained really well. I, I trained, I did technology, computer technology, and I was really good yeah. at it. We had to get trained a year training from all these people. So we, we know how to sell for the right now. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't really about the selling. It was about the relationships Yes, yeah. and talking to the people. So then that one thing led to another thing. And then after I worked on a few productions with Fox and Fox TV, Rogers TV here in the background, and everybody said, you should have your show. And I said, huh. whatever, okay. <laughs> so one day I was sitting in church and um, the show that, you know, God said to tell me your show is going to be called Real Life Matters. Yes. And, and well, you know, it took time, like, like from 2014, but I've been doing show all like media and stuff for a long time. So you got to take your stripe. A lot of people ask me, well, how do you know how to interview these people? I said, from the background of me bringing you to you and making you look good, that's what I do. So, you know, and it takes time. You just can't come out and be run a podcast. Like some people are doing it, but they're not effective. Like right. Tina Renee, you guys are, are not, are, you guys are effective at what you're doing because people are watching and it, mm -hmm. it takes a lot. Well, they call me here because my, my show went on um, TIFF, Toronto International Film Festival oh. here. Hmm. So a lot of people know my show from there and they, they were calling me, I'm the Oprah of Canada, but wish I had the money behind it, but. Okay. <laughs> right. Hey. See? Hello. <laughs> hey. I just need a quarter of that. <laughs> Hey, the, the boss trying to, she falls flagging because she'd be having that hair laid. And I hey, know I she got, got money behind it. I got market, money okay. behind it. Well, you got that money behind it. Well, maybe she'll it, put the money behind over. me like she helps out people. Oh, I yeah. know. Oprah, you hear us. We need you, baby. Oprah, we need, we need you. you. Right. Tyler Perry, we need you because she helped you. We <laughs> need you. Okay. Y'all share this to Tyler Perry, please. Uh, <laughs> we're going to get Maybe we can get an interview, Megan and uh, <laughs> Megan and Prince Harry. Okay. Oh, Ooh. Uh, that would be yeah. some good interviews. Wouldn't it? Huh? Wouldn't it? That would be some great interviews. Yes. <laughs> and they gotta pay us too. And they gotta pay us too. Okay. Yes. <laughs> we take donations. <laughs> but those are some pretty big donations. Yes. Okay. Uh, <laughs> you get to write it off. We're five hundred one c three. Write that thing. Hello. Huh? Make yeah. it a meal, baby. Hello. My bank account is open. <laughs> yes. Give me a high five from over here, the boss. The boss. Yes. <laughs> it's open for business. I know We're that's not shut right. down for COVID for that. I, <laughs> so the boss, I do have a question. How did you become such the strong woman that you are? What is your story? Well, I'm telling you, it wasn't all, it wasn't all better roses and stuff, but, um, you know, right when I started my show, I was, I, they found out I was, I found out at the hospital, I wasn't feeling too good. And I said, well, what's wrong with me? I said, I feel funny. I don't feel right. I feel like I have a cold. And, you know, I said, God, this can't be happening. I'm just starting my show up and what's happening mm -hmm. to me. So I went down, they thought I had lymphoma cancer. Oh, wow. Either sarcoid or lymphoma. And it was right in my chest. So when I talked before, I didn't sound like this. I sounded as if I had a cold. So I was taking mm -hmm. meals, citron and all kinds of stuff. And our, everybody had some kind of remedy, but it wasn't ha happening. So anyways, I had to end up getting the operation. I had to go through all the wait for all the biopsies to come back of what the lymph noids. And it was negative because I said, you devil's a liar. Amen. There you go. I said, the devil is a liar. I said, huh. I don't have that. 
and you're not going to come in the middle of when I'm going to start my show. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> it's tell me what to do. Not today. <laughs> so he held me for two, two years, two years. I, I couldn't do my show. Hmm. And because I had to get better and I had to come up and stuff. So, you know, so me coming where I, where I'm at and, you know, to come here and I'm doing my show, it's only God that does it. Amen. All of my show names came from him, you know, and I'm not, you know, it's not spirit, spiritual, you know what, this is, this is what happens. And we are, you are a champion when you go through things and you have to get up, Amen. take the dust off. You got the jealousy, you got the haters, you got everybody mm -hmm. oh she'll never come up she'll never come up but now what are they saying now because now i'm on tv okay. 12 million <laughs> viewers baby yeah. all around the world <laughs> yes all around and and the thing is about it being on this interview and tina renee and everybody just um coming you know this is you know it's something you know some days i sit down in myself and people say you know i sit down and i cry you know i say oh my gosh you know look look at where, what I'm doing, I'm doing, mm -hmm. you know, and it's hard to do when God tells you to do something and do it, but you yeah. have to do it. And everybody's naysayers and everybody, I said, no, I'm going to do this. I don't know how it's going to come about, but I'm going to do it. And now we're, we're here. So my family, the headquarters for care vision is in Barbados and both my parents come from Barbados. So it's so funny. Wow. <laughs> so funny ah, that you know okay. and 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 the, the headquarters for the tv that's care vision that's running our shows and talk it out and all of us there they they're you know they're like oh my gosh there are hundreds of people from barbados your family's from barbados yes. they know my family yeah. so, wow. Wow. i didn't that's even know wow. that okay that's god that's how you know yeah, yeah. he just aligned your yes. you know your vision yes. You yeah. know, a lot of times people don't understand, like, it's not about you. God, a lot of the times doing your, you know, your triumph, he's aligning your vision and you can see that through your testimony. Mm -hmm. right. And that's to tell. And, you know, and the thing is about when I do the show, the people come on the show, you know, not everybody comes on, you know, but certain people he picks to come on and they actually heal and they actually mm. feel better when they come on the show and then it, it really like certifies their products and if what they're behind. Cause some, a lot of people who came on my show didn't even know how to talk on TV and mm. they have, have evolved over the years. And I said, look at you. Remember when you first came on, look at you now, yeah. now you can talk yeah. to people. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I always tell, or right. I always tell people, if you don't have no teeth, don't sit on that side. You know, that oh, side. Just Wait a minute. <laughs> Well, let me turn on this side then, the ball shoot. The boss, hold on a second. <laughs> what do you want to say now? Catch it right yes, now. She did. Yes, you did. She going to tell it like it is, Mike. You are ready for the boss, okay? Damn. Damn. Damn, baby. <laughs> you, know, you, you, know, you, know, you know, I got one missing in the corner, so I'm just trying to figure it out. Am well, I you going to put a not? piece of cardboard in there. Watch out, <laughs> Well, like, you what? just can't Jesus open God. your mouth too wide. No! <laughs> I cannot. Hey, the uh, ball. Nah. Now, listen, the ball. Now, I'm getting kind of old now. Yes, And I'm yes. trying. Yes. And I'm trying. Okay. But you, I'm done. Put a piece of cardboard. You know she you gave you a solution, Mike. She gave you know what, you though? Use you, you, know, you know, as I'm listening, it. you know, as I'm listening and everything of where you going and all that, I have a great friend in Atlanta uh, Shazzy Warrington, and she's a great friend. She's from the Barbados also. Like, you know, me and her have been friends for since about 2008. And wow. she has a talk show in Atlanta. And uh, I would love to put a chat together between, you know, us three or whatever. You know, you yeah, guys we can all do it. I'm ready. Yeah, okay. Here's what well, we do if, in media. If she, you're not ready to go at any time, then you're not ready. You know what? You know what? And, and she's listening right now. Oh, good. So I just want to tell you that. But but anyway, I'm gonna put that chat together. You know, that's later on. So I'm gonna let Tina Renee do it. Well, I got some other stuff coming that I'm working on another show, and you guys are um, are gonna be in it too. It's gonna be a little bit wild. Ooh, but, uh, oh, I like that. How now. wild is gonna be? 
Listen, if, if it's going to be wild, make sure Tina really involved. Yes. I'll make sure I include you guys. In. You look so much like um that girl, this girl here, Tyra. No, Malaysia. Yeah, Malaysia. Who she looks yeah. like? Um, what's that actor that be acting and everything? Who Malaysia looks like? <laughs> Who Tell me, tell me, tell me, tell me what actor Malaysia looks like right now. She acts in a lot of movies and she's always funny. Um, Malaysia looks like an actor, Tina. Oh, I'll think of it. I probably remember when I'm off the thing. But some people tell me I look like Wendy Williams. Oh, no. oh you know what? No. You know what? No. Sarah, don't, if you, don't let no, me you don't, don't you do that. Because act. you do. Don't you? I don't know. from Barbados. Hey, no, but she looks like that. Wendy Williams. <laughs> no, it's the blonde hair. Now That's tomorrow weird. when she switches that up. thing up, ain't no Wendy Williams looking at all, okay? Okay. <laughs> boom, boom, boom. But so I don't take Botox, what you got going on? I don't take no Botox. But you, you don't take Botox. Boss. Face be sitting like this. Face hey, be sitting know? like this. I'm like the boss. The boss. The boss. Don't do that. Don't do it. No the boss, I got I got a question here, okay? Since you're from Barbados and everything, you come to the United States, right? And uh, now, is it the same like with women, like with men from Barbados? Are they real, like when they get a woman from Barbados in the in the states? Are they real pr protective, like African men with African women? Um, I'm not sure what you're saying, but <laughs> okay, no, what I'm saying is that. Um, men try to keep women in their own country when they come to the United States. He's basically well, they don't want them to have freedom. Is Barbados men different from the ones that you yes. know where you in are. Africa? Like uh, African men are men. men. Men are men. Uh oh. <laughs> they don't change. They don't it change. Doesn't matter if they got good training because or bad you know training. you know African men in 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 America. Take that mic. They try to keep. They try to keep African women in the African culture instead of African women coming to America and getting that freedom. Well, not really. You could, you know, I think I think because I'm born here in Canada, and plus okay. I'm coming in a, from a city from Toronto, which is very we're very diversified. If you yes. guys ever come up here, right. and yeah, and everybody is allowed to keep their culture here. So you ah. know, so so. You know, and then you you got you got so many places that you can go for food. Or we got American food. Yeah, we got right. of food here. So, you know, it just all depends. So, if the people want to really keep people in that thing, then then they shouldn't phase, come out. They yeah. should just stay in Barbados or Trinidad or Africa, or wherever yeah. they are. <laughs> right, right. I agree. You know, said, you know, you know. I say the same thing. The boss said, "Don't come up here with that." <laughs> <laughs> what? No, it was just a question with women because, because women in Barbados and Africa is the same way. They're about the same way. They respect. They respect well, their Rihanna. men now. Well, Rihanna, look at her. You know, she, yeah. made, she adapted. She got yeah. Fendi. She got a lot of money there. And she yeah. and, and yeah. I've been on her street in yeah. Barbados. Yes. She helped them all um, she yes. gave back to her community and she puts yes. a lot of money into the educational system. Yes. Yeah, the boss. What should the world expect from you in the near future? I know what you got going on, but tell the world. Well, you know, there's going to be a lot, a lot of changes. I'm, you know, my real life matter show is going to be the same thing, but it's a little bit switched up a little bit. I'm going to be talking. They're going to, they're really pushing the envelope on me. I'm going to be talking a little bit, some, some views coming out because the views from North America views are different from views from people coming from Car the Caribbean that mm -hmm. look into us because they don't really see those things. So I'm going to be having a couple of segments on that. Then I'm going to be having that wild show, which I'm not going to tell everybody about. So I can't wait. <laughs> you can't wait. You guys okay. are going to be on No, it. no, no. Just, just, just give us we'll, we'll, we'll a snippet. A, you guys are going to have a blast. I'm going to really push the entertainment envelope right to the max with this with this other um, show I'm going to have. And COVID or no COVID, we're still doing it. <laughs> I know that's right. I know that's right. Look, for that one, I'm coming to uh, Ontario, okay? I'll, I'll be there. That's just a plane. 
we go we go come there with where you. are you got you're in chicago everybody's in chicago over there so yeah. we're in freeport and rockford illinois so we yeah we'll take that drive we're down for oh that. okay I mean, take right. that flight. i'm saying take the flight yeah there you flight go or your car Whichever, yeah, you know, a lot of people. Well, if, when we when the borders open up, you can drive. Yeah. Because you yeah. need here in Toronto, you need a car because it's very big. Yeah. To get around, you know. One time I had I had some relatives come from um the UK and they came here. They said when they came here to um Toronto and they were looking around at all the different people, they thought they came to immigration. Mm. And I said no. Mm. <laughs> mm. Says everybody's oh, all friend. different people. Yeah, that, like, yeah it's <laughs> different ethnicity <laughs> there. Yeah. You went there. And Carabana, Carabana is one of the biggest things for the cultural festivals. We get in like about two to three million people wow. coming for that weekend yes. alone. So that's yeah. like black people weekend, everybody back off. <laughs> and it's huge. For your, any other to... race, we're not having it this weekend. <laughs> <laughs> not a weekend. I know that's right. What is one of the biggest accomplishments that you've had so far to, um, on your journey in um, media? Well, uh, obviously, I'm um, coming on um, TV, national, you know, international TV, um, you know, and just the doors just been opening, like, you know, uh, getting to know the people in the Midwest, like you guys, because we always see the people in New York and Florida and Atlanta and all that. But we never meet, and, and I thank goodness for uh, Chill, uh, for him letting us see you guys, because a lot of people have never seen you guys in the Midwest. We always see everybody from New York. We always see different people, but now we're getting to know, hey, there's a lot of people coming from the Midwest. Yeah. Uh -huh. So that's one of the accomplishments we're doing there. So it's good. Definitely. Mm. Saying your bandwidth. <laughs> 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 I say you're bad with this band. I don't know how these shows are going to go because I'm telling you, this bandwidth is driving me crazy. I understand that. I'm, I'm with you, DeMoss. I'm with so you. The bandwidth, yeah. so, so the bandwidth throw off the shows or something like that? You're trying to say? Yeah, it's not to uh, say that not the actual internet. You, you got internet, but when you're doing the streaming, it, it, does, it, it slows everything down. It slows everything down, yeah. If you think you didn't oh, click the button. Okay. You think that you didn't click the button, but you did. And then here yeah. it comes up. Yeah. So everybody's having that issue. Yeah. So the boss, how can our listeners get in touch with you? And what, like you already explained your next step. So can you go ahead and give us your social media and any last mm -hmm. minute words of wisdom? Well, you can follow me on IG, dboss underscore one, uh, dboss real life matters. Um, if you want to go to my website, it's dbossnetworks.com. Facebook, sweet the boss. It's not sweet like sugar, sweet like a hotel suite, sweet the boss. And you can look at the boss boss sticker. You can join me. I answer. You could tag my page. You know, when people not allowing people to tag their page, just another thing that you know, I allow people to do it because what? Why are we having right. Facebook for? Right. Why right. we have it? What? What do we have it for? It's for me. It's just so I I can showcase everybody. So right. Tag whatever you guys want, right. as long as not nudity. Maybe that's okay for Jordan, but I don't know. <laughs> Watch out now. <laughs> <laughs> or Paul Pierce, one of them. Paul Pierce is good with Paul Pierce. Oh, okay. Paul Pierce, he done turned, he done turned into a pimp all of a sudden. He said pimp it ain't easy, Mike. He said pimp it ain't easy, okay? DeVos, one last thing. Opinion. I, just, I I'm sorry, I had to interrupt you, Tina. Our boss makes sure he wants us to say the views and opinions is not that of fight right here with the guest. Oh, okay. The opinion is not that of the host and the guest. It's not that of fight right here Definitely. I'm going to be good, Rocky. I promise. I promise I'm going to be good after this. You know, the boss, your personality, our personalities are bold, okay? I know Mike be like, Tina, would you shut up, please? But at the same time, this is us. Where do you get your spirit from? Ah, uh, I tell you, well, sometimes you have to have a little drink, too. You know, a doctor... <laughs> Dr. Pepper. Hey, Amen. A doctor told me a long time ago, if you have a drink, drink a day, It'll keep you okay. And okay. It's <laughs> See, look, I like that. I'm going to shirt you. made. <laughs> you have a drink a right day, here. it'll keep you okay. Tattoo it on my forehead. Can you see what <laughs> The doctor prescribed it. Okay. <laughs> all right. For everybody that's out there, DeVos is all around the world. 
if they would like to get onto your platform, tell them where they need to go, DeVos. Well, they can either, they can um, just send me an email at media at dbossnetworks.com or you can just inbox me. But um, it's better if you send me an email because that way I, I can respond to it because I get a lot of people inboxing with, I don't know what, but um, mm -hmm. that's it. Or just, you know, or reach out to Tina Renee and then they could just forward it, the email to you. And that's, that's right. it. Definitely. All right, last minute wisdoms before we get out. Words of wisdom before we get out of here, DeVos. Oh, you guys are, am I the last one? Yeah, you're the last yes. one. Oh my God. <laughs> we say the best for last. Okay. Right. And you guys can watch my show from 10 to 11. Real Life Matters is right after this. Yes. So, and you can watch Talk It Out from 11, 11 to 12. So we're really late night now. So we're really, we're happy for that. Definitely. Y'all D-Boss, y'all can find her on Talk It Out, Real Life Matters. Y'all look her up because she's above that. Um, D-Boss, we love you, girl. Yes. All day long. I don't know that. that See you later. Tonight. See you later, yeah. boss. All right, and I didn't mean anything about your teeth. <laughs> <laughs> no, remember you the cardboard. I don't care. Okay, you can go buy some. <laughs> <laughs> the boss, Lord Jesus. I love you. I swear, our personality. She's so funny. I can. Die. Well, oh, thank you for thank you guys for having me. If you guys want me to come on again, I will. We we gonna yes. bring you back. Bring you back. Bring it back. You already know it. All day, sis. <laughs> See you right. later. <laughs> I love her. <laughs> the boss is so funny. She just oh, tell it like it is, y'all. Love All it. Day long. Love All it. Day long. Wow. I needed that. We need yes. a lot. I'm good. Happy now anniversary, she man. About getting on TV. <laughs> You know, you know. We're already on TV. I don't no, know what that's talking about. Like, we're, I want to be on, on TV. I want to be on Roku stay. We're going to be okay. there. Okay. Like, give us yeah, some Roku. Here. Okay, no, year four. That's our goal. 2021, turn on the TV and say, hello. Get us some of the discussions. Hey, y'all. I want to know, know what we all look like. I want to know, you know what celebrity I look like. That's going to be stuck in my head. You know. I want to know. I, I, I was trying to, I was trying Probably to wait for her. That's Raji probably who she was trying to say. Who? Yes. Taraji. Taraji? Yes. You know what? Taraji, she said, Taraji. look, the boss still on there. She said, yes. That's it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and Taraji said, yes. You know, Malaysia, your purse, your face changed with your the different style. Yeah. So yeah, sometimes I'd be like, dang, who she look like? Did you have a great girl? You just. Right. Malaysia, but next week, give me something different. I have different hair on. Yes. But, but I'm liking this. I like your hair right now. You looking all natural and stuff. I got to figure some of that. Right. Right. Well, y'all, thank y'all, everybody that's out there for tuning in to Sofa Discussions Flight Radio 105.7. For everybody that's out there, y'all know we're giving you the urban talk and we're telling it like it is right here on Sofa Discussions every Wednesday from 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. Not only are we on 105.7 in, in the Freeport area, we're on Live 365 and on Facebook and on YouTube and all that wonderful stuff, y'all. So keep on following us. Keep on loving on us with three years strong, baby. Three, three years strong. <laughs> Three, 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 three years strong. Three. And with that said, 2021 yes. is all about expansion in our world. So with that said, y'all be able to look out for some of the things we got coming up because we're coming for you. If you're an artist, if you're an entrepreneur, if you got a brand that you want to tell us about, guess what? Hit us up. WQJT submit 1057 at gmail.com. We look forward to seeing y'all next Wednesday. Oh, we're here. Man, 105.7 FM. Let's go. Boom. <laughs> See y'all later, y'all. Love y'all.